Hello everyone. Together on the Bicycle Channel. I welcome you very warmly. Yes indeed it is today. A Friday. I don't have anything like that on my mind now. Pensions. <laughs> yes. Today. Shut. It is. Around 20 degrees. Yes. So once again it's a truly beautiful day for a splendid one. Making rubbing bags of course. Indeed, I'm currently heading over. This route is known as the A40 or Hoher Schnellweg in the Ruhr area. It was previously referred to as the A40 construction site, and before that, the B1 Federal Road. At some point, this thing must have, for whatever reason, transformed into a major highway. Yes, I have to say that my destination is today in Dortmund and this much I can reveal, this is the Phoenix Lake, the Phoenix Lake in Dortmund. Yes, that was 2010, I think. After five years of construction, this lake became... built? Or it was created on what was once a former steel plant at Fison. Perhaps it was Faith. I did, and now it's a fantastic local recreation area, if you will, from there. Um... Okay, I'll certainly show another card and then tell a lot more from the PC cutting table so that I don't talk nonsense here either. As I said, I'll probably be at my destination in 10 minutes or 15 minutes at Lake Phoenix, where I'll park and start my tour from there. Therefore, I would like to say goodbye for now, waving my hand in farewell. Greetings to all tuning in to the Travel Channel. This should be Friday, October 18th, as seen in the background. And surely already noticed, you can see a lake and a few houses on the other side. Yes, I'm here now, as I said, in Dortmund at Lake Phoenix. It's now behind me. It looks pretty smooth and mirrored, so it's very windless today, today Friday the 18th. Uh, October is supposed to be a very nice warm day, very windless. That's why I took the opportunity again and made a trip here today. Yes, the Phoenix is Phoenix um, from the ashes, you could say, or maybe the namesake thought of this story, because this area actually used to be Thyssen and Steelworks here, so it says on the internet and... And the construction period took five years until this lake was finished so far that it was ready to fill in October 2010. Yes, as I said, today I'm doing a not too big round, about almost 30 kilometers. It starts here, as I said, at Phoenix Lake, then goes in the direction of the Emscher upstream and... Or later, I drive downstream on the Emscher back from Holzwickerde. But before that, I take another train route from here. So there are some railway lines that I will be on. And yes, so you can be excited and on the way. And on the way, I will test a few more things. I'll get closer. I hope I'm not too close. Yes, I have a new bag on my arm here. Bag is good, me. a hip belt like that and you can make a bar at the back 
And yes, I wanted to test that because I find other perspectives. So I will be on the road quite nicely. I hope I still have time to test. And then I have here another, uh, yes, a gimbal. Mm -hmm. Of course, of both articles, I will give you one. Put a corresponding picture from the internet, then you can see it even better. So much so, I want to take it in my hand here so that you can see it. It's called Telesyn, and it's a gimbal that enables cell phones, for example, because cell phones no longer have follow functions or a selfie follow mode, face tracking mode. And this part here, for example, you can put cell phones or action cams on it that don't have facial tracking no automatic or that just can't or support it like that i will also test it on the way so now it's getting really warm for me here i have to say yes it should be around about 20 degrees plus or minus today and i think i feel like i'm already sweating really will that be the case yes that should have been from here first so you may be curious, uh, as I said, about the two articles here. This belt where you can make a rod at the back and then have different viewing perspectives. And here this gimbal for automatic tracking, by the way, there is a camera in it. OK, so here we go. Hello everyone, now here again from the PC cutting table. You see I have now driven along the waterfront and here I have to push the last piece. I also arrived here at the French fries kitchen. You can see bowl of French fries and I treated myself to them. Here is a photo of the so-called Thomas Pear on the cultural island. And now, here I have to push again. I did the whole thing in time-lapse mode while pushing here on the harbour promenade and you can see the pedestrian zone here, the sign on the right and now it continues towards the northeast so to speak or I have to make a small detour first because I'm trying to reach a railway line like this. In the north of the Phoenix Lake, actually in the northern middle of the Phoenix Lake, but here begins a look down on the Phoenix Lake. Here I could have actually pushed up from down there, from the bike track. You see vines seem to be this here, but that would have gone up here in a zigzag, and I believe that that... I did a good job of driving it around. Yes, here I think is the beginning of a former railway line, coal mine railway, coal railway, whatever, whatever it was called in the past or what it was, I have no idea. I will now drive a little bit of a former railway line, as I said, and then I will have to turn again, that's it. Here on the B236, I hit it right away and then somehow I have to go back. I assume that this was also a branch from this, from this railway line here. There were a lot of coal railways or colliery railways just here in the Ruhr area 
it's full of them as I said this is where I left now I have to change them now it probably used to be original and actually continued here by the way I'm currently under B what did I say B236 cycled underneath and now I'm here on my way to the next railway line Yes, as I said, you can see it already looks very nice, but what surprises me is that that... Not so much yet. Here you can see a little redder foliage just at the top of the picture. There is also a lot of foliage, but what I miss a bit, this yes is actually the typical foliage discoloration of the colors green, yellow, brown. So somehow I'm still missing something. Well, but maybe there's a piece here on the former railway line of another coal railway, coal mine railway, whatever here. Here the view, then right into some street from the bridge down here. By the way, I also thought the railing was very nice, yes. And now we go straight to my first location, where I will introduce you to the first product. But first a little recording of how I make my live videos that you can see right now. Uh, genau, in die Richtung da hinten muss ich gleich noch radeln. Nice to see you again. It is only a relatively short tour, around approximately 30 kilometers. So, hello. I now have this big belt here that I have down here. I hope you can see that. I've changed it now and I hope you can see it a little bit behind me here. I'm trying to feel this way now, right back here. That should be the pole now. Certainly I will attempt that right now. Additionally, please turn on the microphone as well. You would have to get this behind here now can see me. Okay, yes, I'll try to turn around now. You can now see the strap at the back of your back. It's now firmly on your stomach. And I hope you can see that to some extent. Here's the pole. You can pull it out. Of course, it's a telescopic pole. You can go in and out. And yes, I hope you could see that a little bit. I hope you could see Right up there I have the Fimi aerial device. POM. Professional Model 2. Using it, I am able to perform the task right here. One? The one situated on the handlebar. I can see the signal quite clearly here on the cell phone display screen. I hope you see it a little better now. That's exactly the signal here, which I now have at the top and back above my head, and here at the bottom right in the corner you can't see it very badly there's actually a cross and with it i can control and operate the camera at the top i hope you can see this a little bit carefully and then i'll set them up this is exactly what i have the capability to adjust while on the move allowing me to change the viewing angle as needed so yes my intention was to demonstrate how this operates and now we will proceed with testing it on the go. Now I have the camera here. The angle of view from the Femi and the hip bar to the back. Here again to the front with the DJ. Here again to the back with the bar with the Femi on it. Here again with the DJ Pocket 2 to the front. I change the whole thing from time to time. You can also see what you can see below. Here again the Fimi Palm 2 Pro. You always see that with the hat at the bottom. That's the perspective from the Fimi and now that's the sound with the DJ. I just changed the keys here so I ran the Fimi. Now the sound here is from the Fimi. You hear a little more wind noise. However, I have to say that on the DJ, which I have in front of my left chest, of course I have a really thick bushel covering over it. 
over the external microphone so just that as a difference so that you can also notice what you can do there so now comes the picture from the DJ and the sound from the DJ um mal jetzt ist die Bildqualität ist I think this is now from the Femi and the sound so sound, image and sound are now always switched between the two cameras and I think that's my very personal opinion. You can see that maybe you notice it a little bit too. Ich finde, dass die DJ doch ein bisschen Qualität hat. Ich muss dazu sagen, dass ich die Femi even recorded it with 4K, but unfortunately it can only record a maximum of 30 frames per second while the DJ Pocket 2 and I think the 1 can also record it Yes, they can even record in 4K, they can even record 60 frames, but I don't want to summon it now. So, I always think the Femi is a bit like that, they are a bit of the edge zones in the picture. My personal opinion is blurred, I mean I don't see it that way with the DJ Pocket. I'm here now. The test is now over with the two cameras and the hip belt where you can make the bar on top, as I said, I'm already here. In upper back, that means, I think here, from Dortmund. I have to go through it now. In the meantime, I'll tell you a little bit about the camera. As I said, the test is now over so far but I'll certainly try it out again with the Fimi because it has a normal jack plug so I think it's a 2.5 millimeter stereo jack which I think is very good so you can also plug in a microphone directly just like the DJ Pocket 2 if you have the Wi-Fi module at the bottom there is also an adapter socket at the DJ Pocket 2 with this expansion module at the bottom which you can simply plug in then you can do it there too connect an external microphone via the jack so I have to say of course I think the Femi doesn't quite have the brilliance that the DJ brings what's the reason for this whether it's the built-in sensor chip or whether it's a software story What I liked was the tone, I glued small pushels on it, on the microphone holes from the Fimi and I have to say that it was really really great earlier, good sound, I drove really fast, so good so fast I could with engine support 25 kilometers per hour and with the built-in microphones I found that it is also stereo. Um, the wind noise not very big so not very yes so that there were a lot of this noise wind noise I had that with the yes I think you can do that with the DJ pocket too if you know where the holes are you can do that I have that as I said I glued a little bit on it with you because it is self-adhesive Pads are not very helpful for the microphones. Let's see if I can show you again in the next video what I'm doing. I'll do a few more tests with the Femi Femi Palm 2 Pro. By the way, I think you have to be careful because of the version. Yes, and we'll see. I'll be there. I will definitely make some other recordings which I don't think I will do. So with this with this hip belt and the bar on the back, that didn't make that much of a difference to me from perspective. What I could see here now in direct comparison earlier. Yes, well, you could still make a rear camera perspective. That might certainly be very interesting. Yes, as I said, I'm already here through Dortmund. I think I cycled through Applebeck and uh, 
I'm now switching to a former short railway line here again. Yes, I think that's Wicked Dortmund, Wicked Day or whatever. In any case, it's also a bit about this airport here in Dortmund. Yes, and that's why it's actually a circular route between Phoenix Lake from there to the east via Uplerbeck, Solder and... Until Holzwikede where I then actually a little bit north, so here Unamassen, Wick, Wickede, exactly Dortmund, Wickede, and then over Unamassen and then down again. Yes, now I'm here right now, Unamassen, you see this is now a path, so after the sign you have to push here, which of course I did, of course. It was a shortcut, but you see, I hope you also watched a little bit in the video. The paths are mostly very beautiful because they are former railway lines or like here, just many side roads. You know me well, of course, of course you have to cross one or the other street or intersection here and there, but V-A-Y-G, that all holds up as a whole, uh, yes, here on the left. Um, I don't know whether it was potatoes, it bloomed somehow. I assume that it was potatoes, maybe a late variety, I don't know, yes. And uh, unfortunately I had it on the way here now too with the one. Um, I have an external Sony microphone so it has a jack plug directly attached to it. I always plug it in or have it fixed with a clip in front of the chest with a huge bushel, like I think but you hear it. So I think the wind noise is really almost zero, so they are zero. With such weather today it was very windless and I drove pretty fast, so at 25 kilometers per hour wind, so to speak, to speed. Because as fast as I drive and without a headwind and when there is no wind, it is logically 25 kilometers per hour wind speed and you just don't hear anything. All right, there will of course be tours again that I will do. I will try to drive through the winter accordingly. There will probably be even windier days again, but you will have already noticed in the last videos that I have done a lot on it and I'm very satisfied with this microphone. I always plug it in separately because the built-in microphone on the DJ Pocket 2 is also on the one without a windshield over the camera. This leads to considerable wind noise. Yes, I've already arrived here in Holzwickede. You can see here that it's Montan Hydraulics or yes, I don't know what. It says on the internet that they probably repair it and now I'm driving through Holzwickede for a while. You can say straight ahead north of Holzwickede, where I am now approximately. From the distance, the straight line to the airport, Dortmund Airport, is only round about 1.15 kilometers as the crow flies. Yes, of course you have to suffer a bit through wooden wicks here, that's unfortunately now. Due to the tour. Well, you know, as long as there are cycle paths and they are here, Thank God they are represented here. So you can now see the sign on the right again. And so I'm already paying attention to it. But I have a small one here. I'm always looking for sneak paths. I found them for this round, round about 400 meters. It's now here. A garden settlement. There wasn't a prohibition sign that said cycling was forbidden. So I used that too. 
I'm happy for every bit, for every half a kilometer and more of course, where I wasn't somehow here, I would now actually come from the left on this street. Well, now it was still here, there's not much going on on Friday. Yes, here on the left it would have gone to the Emsha source. I had actually only been away by bike for a good two minutes and here on the right there was an original sign. I really looked at this here in Google Maps Street View and saw that there was actually an additional sign underneath. That this was a bike path here on the right. Yes, wonderful sky. It's already getting closer to 6 1 p.m. And after our summer time here in Europe, it's now the time of year here in mid-October. Then it's starting to get dark and yes, and if you're lucky, there's just sometimes such a beautiful great evening sky. Yes, here I'm crossing the railway line again and what I thought was a bit of a shame as I said, you had to go on a country road like this um, because here is the beginning of the actual, what I think is the Emscher Embankment cycle path where it really is here now, I find it from here. Really here on the left is actually the Emscher. That's still a small trickle. A small stream, you could say, goes along. And from here, I find, yes, you have more or less the possibility to always cycle right or left next to the Emscher Lang. So I found it quite nice here, but just to get here. Yes, was it a bit difficult for you to wrap through wood now? Okay, now let's do the next test here. He is now standing here with this, exactly with this gimbal. Yes, you probably just heard it, so if you put a camera on it, it's quite loud and you just saw the scene when I drive further away past the tripod with the gimbal with the camera on it then it doesn't pan anymore I have I tried it at home calmly and in a garage yard and I have found that if I am not directly at the height of the gimbal while it is not at least 2.5 meters away from me when passing or running, so rough estimate, then it does not react. So, when driving past, of course, you're further away at the beginning, you're sure to approach, so it basically stays aimed at you with the camera, but when you're driving towards it, you really have to make sure that you're not further away than two and a half meters so that it can really pan and you've heard that if you have a camera with sound the sound isn't exactly very sparkling so with this one from the engine well that's it I will certainly try a little more so I thought that was quite good. Why wasn't it directly with the tracking at the height of the camera? That's a bit of a problem. I had the Fimi Palm 2 on it and it has a three axis gimbal itself and it always pulls so a little time delayed. I'll do the whole thing again with a GoPro which doesn't have the problem because it doesn't have a three axis gimbal installed and in the camera and that should be really real soon, really parallel. I should always be fully in the field of view of the camera, even when driving by. Yes, by the way, you can still see here in the video, this is now the Emscher cycle path with the one with the blue board here on the right. Again, the Emscher. 
and I thought it was a bit of a shame. Well, that can of course be done here in the Ruhr area where it is densely populated, not always quite like that. So I found that there were always a lot of crossroads here that cross one and here the next crossing again. Well, that was once a path. You can drive through it, but on the whole, yes. So I didn't think the Emscher path was quite that great here. Okay, that's maybe nice at a high level. You can see you tried here too. Paint a marking on the asphalt and make the route clear. But, I'll put it this way, I was always very happy that I had my dresser on my cell phone with me. And yes, as I said, deforestation wickeday. Where I got on the Elmshadweg it really was. Pretty good from there. Yes, now I'm back in Dortmund, Aplerbeck. This is now the market square, not far from here. There is actually a train station. If you want to take the Emscherweg for a longer distance, you can also go here quite well by train. And by the way, I think it's even barrier free and you can then start the tour from here. You see, it's pretty idyllic here, so it's pretty well done. Well, you have to go around the curves and over small bridges, and then you come here at the castle, and then you come out. You just have to look. That's called the Moated Castle House Rodenberg. As I saw or suspected, I think there was a bit of outdoor catering, but as you can see here, head straight there is also a restaurant, so you will be well taken care of there, and now the view of the castle is also chiming right now. The bell, I think it's exactly 6 p.m., and yes, you see, the pond in the foreground is reflected beautifully. Yes, yes, and here on the left there is also an excursion or gastronomy. You can also sit outside, so there are also garden chairs outside and tables. Rodenburg 1770 is called the gastronomy there. Yes, and if you want, you can also eat there. Yes, I'm cycling on here now, I'm cycling here now because the Emscher now makes a little bit of a curve here. The Emscher always really follows. This is the wrinkled Felchen railway bridge here. I say yes, in the Ruhr area there were a lot of... former railway lines, not only with passenger traffic, coal and steel, and some hot steel boiled things were driven back and forth, partly by train. Therefore, there are always some bridges and sections of... Everything merges seamlessly into each other from railway lines, etc. Yes, as I said, the Emscher has been renaturalized, whether it will be done here now. I think that has been done to a certain extent. If I see this here on a map, and yes, and on a large scale, then further downstream she sees and... These poles there are blue with white arrows on them. And that is probably the symbol that this is this Emscher cycle path. Yes, and actually it also works relatively well through Dortmund in the middle. Ich bin ab Dortmund auch schon mal den Weg. Cycling downstream and yes you have done and done a lot there. Yes I hope you liked the door so much and it was just a little round with tests of gimbal and this hip belt and yes here's a little bit of beautiful sunset. I would be happy if you leave a thumbs up there. And 
leave a subscription of course by the way I just saw a rainbow grate you can see it right here it is in the sky in the blue sky I say thank you for watching wave wave and until next time bye